This is the AVIT department, Westminster Computer Lab. Today we want to show you how you can create your own videos uh, using an application called PTV. There are many different um, uh, non-linear video editors that are uh, available uh, and can be used in this computer lab, but I find this PTV application is the simplest to use and highly recommended if you're doing group work. Um, we're just going to demonstrate this in the main uh, server for the um, computer teacher, although this application will be available on all workstations to allow the uh, students to work on their individual projects. Uh, to launch it, you go uh, to the main menu and you would go to sound and video and you would travel down the menu until you see the TV video editor and then you would click on it to launch and it shows the typical screen uh, for the editor basically this area right here is where you bring in the media whether it's uh, screen capture clips uh, using GDK Record My Desktop which is a, now a video for, a YouTube video for that you can take a look at. Uh, could be um, um, music um, that you have recorded and stored it as an mp3. I would recommend to take a look at our YouTube videos to um, create your own music. And, or it could be title sequences, like uh, perhaps using OpenOffice and Press, uh, where you ran a slideshow and uh, you're showing a title, and you're using GDK Record My Desktop uh, actually to record the screencast and then bring it in as a title. In a way, it's kind of interesting. This PTV um, video editor allows us to combine a lot of different elements that you may have looked at already from our YouTube videos and bring them into one focal point, uh, a project, so to speak. Uh, the very first thing that I would do uh, for my project, I'm going to give you an example of a typical video that uh, I have, uh, you, a video that I have created that I've posted up onto YouTube. I'm going to save this first. Uh, it's very important to save the stuff. In fact, with this particular edi video editor, I recommend save and save frequently because sometimes the every once in a while this application may have a habit of freezing up but if you've saved to the last editing change you can just simply restart the uh, the uh, you know stop and restart this uh, application and uh, and then continue on and load in your saved work so i'm going to say file save as uh, i'm going to save this under documents I always get into the good habit of saving this where it should be and i'm going to go under a directory i've created already called video project i'm going to call this my project And it has a, a, uh, its own particular uh, extension which indicates that this is the native file for this type of, uh, this type of uh, program. So this is called My Project. I'm just going to save this. Now I'm going to bring in some, uh, some elements that I'm going to work with today. So you just click on to Import Clips. Uh, go to the area where your stuff is stored. I have mine under Documents, under Video Project. And I have a number of different things. I have uh, a uh, AVI file of uh, the Westminster video logo that I've created. So I'm going to click on that and bring it in. I'm go also going to bring in um, my screen capture. Um, so uh, um, um, called Common Operations. Bring that in. I'm going to bring in the credits that are going to be at the ending. And again, it's just a screen capture. And I'm going to bring in um, some vocals. I had a friend who uh, created the song. I asked him to take the vocals off and I asked permission, which is very important, if I could use his background music for all of my YouTube instructional videos for Westminster United Church. And what I've done is I've not only taken the song, uh, using the Audacity program, I've simply copied and pasted it many, many times because sometimes my videos might last longer than the song. So this is a way to, to continually loop it. And if you listen to my YouTube videos, you'll hear that quite a lot. So I'm going to select that, and now I have everything to work away on my particular project. So I'm just going to click and drag in my video logo, and I can start to play that. 
what happens is there's a viewing area here to show what happened. So I'm just going to stop that now. And I'm going to save. Remember I mentioned save this as regularly as you can in case something goes wrong. Now I'm going to click onto this button to go to the very end and I can actually drag my timeline to add in a different area. The other area I'm going to drag in is my actual video now. Screencast that I did using GDK Record My Desktop. And not only does it show the um, video, but it shows my audio. So I'm just going to click to a slightly different area here just to sort of show the ending of the title and going into the actual filming. And I can adjust the volume simply by pointing and clicking on this red line uh, to adjust it to the way that I want. So let me just start playing this right now. Let's save. Let me get into that habit. Let's click on play. This is the ADIT department, Western's computer. Do you notice that I'm adjusting the level of my volume? A little bit about the desktop and the scene. Yeah, after I've done that, I'm going to now add in the credits. So I'm going to go to the very end of my presentation. And I'm just going to keep on clicking and dragging until I see the end. And sometimes my, um, I record too much, especially with the screencast. Um, sometimes uh, you know, I record too much and I have to click the uh, stop button. So what I can do here is just play this and listen to where I want the end of my particular um, video to be. The flexibility here for you, again, because we're ADI team, we're really, really, really do want to help you. We're there for you. We support you. We have Okay, so around at this point I want to actually cut out this so I can tack on my credits. So I'm just going to click onto this area and then select the cut tool. Now it looks like it's cut this into two different regions. And I'm not going to delete this right away. I have to mark what is the area that I want deleted. So I'm going to click on to the area I want deleted and then click on to the delete button. Now it's gone. I'm just going to click back into my, my area. I can play this back if I wanted to. I'm just going to fast forward this to the end. I'm going to say it. Get into that habit. Very, very important. And this way now I can bring in my credits. Now unfortunately with my credits I've gotten into the really, really bad habit of uh, not saving it in the proper format. For example, I have it in the main screen here. I have it in the main screen here where I'm going to run the slideshow because I'm doing a screencast. Well, obviously I don't want that portion in, so I'm going to need to find out the best point to cut the slideshow. And now it's really dark here, so I can select this. You should click into the video area itself to uh, bring up the cut tool. So I'm going to select my cut point. I'm going to select the area I want to delete and click delete. Look at how easy this is. <laughs> It's not rocket science. It's actually quite easy. And I'm going to do the same thing for the very ending of my video. Obviously, I want to select it at a point where it fades to black. I can also use my arrow keys, my right and left. That looks pretty good. So I'll just click on the cut tool, move to the area where I want to delete it. If, it's, if the areas that you want to delete are very small, you can use the arrow keys actually move. And there we go. So we've cut out this particular area. Now what I can do is click and drag and join these pieces together. So now I have pretty much everything that I need in order to do this video. What should I do? If you guess saving, you get the gold star. And the last thing I want to do, because I find that on YouTube there's a lot of videos out there, and they're good, but to give our video a little more panache, I like putting in 
vocals, or not vocals, uh, music. Uh, music is a little light background, and it just uh, it sets our, our work apart a little bit more, makes it a little more enjoyable. So I'm just going to click and drag the vocals down below here. Um, so here it is. And I'm going to drop it in. And I can now move, click and drag to move where I want the vocals to start. So it's very visual. And normally for something like background vocals, I bring it down quite a bit. So just very quickly, just as a test, save and play. Hello, this is the ADIT department, Western Computer Lab. Uh, today we want to talk about a little bit about the desktop. This is great. Save again. Let's go to the end. Because really, other than rendering, we only have really one more thing to do. To make our videos look a little more interesting, we've got to do two things. Number one, we've got to get rid of this extra music. Because the music should really stop at the end and not prolong the video. Number one. Number two, we want to, uh, what I do, and if you've noticed a lot of these YouTube videos, the music starts to fade um, during the slide that indicates who gave me permission to use the background music, uh, which, by the way, is a person by the name of Michael Keeley, who is my, a good friend from a long, long time ago, a fellow bandmate, and uh, he just does this excellent work and should be commended. And hence, I think, in the credits, it's good to give credit where, where credit's due. Now, what I can do here is I can select not a cut point, because I don't want to cut this out necessarily, but something that's referred to as a... Uh, it's, it's like a handle. Um, there's a... There's a uh, uh, it's, it's called a keyframe. That's what its official name is. And it allows you just to set this to begin, and then we can, uh, a little bit farther in, set up another keyframe, let's say here. So we have to click that into where the audio is, the music, I should say. And there's the other keyframe. And what we can do now is click and drag on this keyframe, and now we're bringing the music down. See how easy that is. Just make sure that this is all the way down, which it is. And now here, we can select to the end of the video, click cut, select this extra music that's here and delete it. And we're now done. And now we can test this out. I won't test it at all. I'm just interested now in testing to see where the uh, music starting to fade. So let's save. And let's preview. Look at that. Let's go back to the beginning. And in order to convert this into file that can be uploaded to YouTube, you want to render. Render just means generating the final product, taking all the elements and rendering or producing something. So I'm going to say here, render project. You have to choose an output file, so I'll click choose file, select under documents, video project, and we can give it a name. I'm going to say my project. AVI files are very user-friendly, uh, YouTube-friendly, so I'm going to set it as an AVI file. Very common. I'm going to go to Modify. The video output is set uh, to a particular um, a video standard that's more overseas than what we are. We want to make sure it's NTSC. Uh, I'm going to select the high-definition video to make it look nice. That's what I normally do. And under Export to Container, I select um, AVI 
decoder, this ABI Muxer, um, ABI Mux, and that will produce my ABI setting. Click on OK, click on Render, and now it'll start to go through. Some might um, indicate slow, <laughs> and for the, for a video that, that's about this size, it's going to take about 20 minutes. It's going to go through and it's going to render this as an ABI file. Once this is finished. Uh, then it should say render incomplete. It might say one second left. After a few minutes, it's still there. It's pretty safe to assume it's been finished. And, uh, and then you can go, I would uh, open up a file, uh, your uh, Nautilus file manager. Again, how to use this is contained in the YouTube video. Just to see that your work is there and to run it and to view it and to see if you're happy. Uh, happy with the audio levels, the music levels, uh, that it seems to be working. Uh, the way that it is, and then when you're finished that, uh, you can send it up to uh, YouTube. This is the AVIT department wishing you happy volunteering and showing you a tool how to put the other tools together wrapped up in a bow. Remember Westminster, you are only limited by your imagination. Have a nice day.